hoping, my friends, battles have yet to begin. Laughter will be had in gales and floods, with not at least the will be blood. Sorrow and loss may abound We'll do our best To hold this hallowed ground And welcome back <laughs> Or welcome to the first I guess it's welcome back to our players But welcome to the first ever Second heaven. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. Welcome to Night Bang, where Yay! we're gonna explore a world where the world has gone crazy. Where creatures, mythical creatures that were supposed to be mystery or mythical, <laughs> are not existed, now exist in the real world. We have three excellent players here that are gonna attempt to figure out what's going on in this world um, and let's see what they come up with as to the purpose in life now you know it's a little hard when everything you know or thought you knew gets all tossed up and thrown into the wind and where you land and what you do from there some people end up in the insane asylum or jail and some people take advantage of it and become Elon Musk but anyway um, <laughs> Hey, a you totally never know. character. Absolutely. Yeah, well, so, I was so. going to say space Y, but hey, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, for those of you, I'm just going to do this real fast, but for those of you who don't know, Nightbane is a, a shoot off a subset of the Palladium system um, that was out a very, very long time ago. Didn't get a lot of the love, but the people who adopted it fell in love with it and I find it to be a very dynamic system very playable and one that's very hard to outgrow because usually when I'm playing other campaign systems that everyone knows and loves um, you start off low and then you get to a point where everything's easy and it's hard to expand and go on. Whereas the Palladium system or the Nightbane system in particular, it just keeps escalating and there's always more that you can do. It goes on to the next level and how that happens will slowly be explained and you'll come to learn it as the campaign goes on. Uh, I will say that when Nightbane first came out, it went through a lot of controversy because of the name and I can't say the original name because that has been sued. And uh, they had to change the name of the system and went through all sorts of things. And I will say, if you ever do get a copy of the original books, well, one, hold on to them, and then two, have a good read and laugh as you read through it. And it looks like it was written by third graders who had no editor in chief to <laughs> go over and say, hey, can we spell this right even? <laughs> you know, it's, it's a bad, it was a bad document. Um, but I and a friend, group of friends of mine a long time ago went through it, kind of rewrote it, kind of changed some rules that didn't make sense or were conflicting. And this is not a pure system. This is, I would have to say this is homebrew. This is, we've changed so much. Maybe this is homebrew, but it does, it is based on the night pain and the palladium system. There are definite things, things that you can follow along. Um, the other thing that may be a little different from other systems is this is uh, much more theater of the mind. We're not going to have as many maps, so to say, um, as in other systems or fantasy set systems. But the good thing about it is uh, the world that we're in it actually is the world as it was in 2020. And we are going to use Google Maps or Google Earth to say where we are in the world 
and I will post uh, the coordinates many times as we move through the world. So if you ever want to watch or see where we are and follow along sometimes, just pull up a Google Maps and throw the coordinates in and you can follow along because I will have them pull it up and they'll be walking down the street and we'll be able to tell what buildings are on the left, right, blah, blah, blah. It's a really fun system. And hey, I don't have to build any maps because the world already exists. <laughs> Sorry, I cheated. That's not fair. Um, Nightbane. I guess I'm going to go over this for first time watchers. Um, the premise of Nightbane is this is the world 2020 as you knew it. I am putting this as pre COVID. So in this world, COVID didn't happen. March 6 is technically around the area where COVID started to become a problem. It actually happened early in 2019, but I'm just going to say the world was normal up to March 6, 2020. And then on March 6, 2020 at 6.02 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the planet went into darkness. The stars, the moon, it all disappeared. Now, of course, depending on weather patterns, you might have had clouds, but those who had free open sky, it all disappeared. And it was a global thing. Um, there were, it was like somebody put a blanket over Earth. It, everything just disappeared. And of course, you can imagine that kind of caused a little global freak out. Um, everyone acted according to whatever you know their beliefs you know the religious people probably thought it was armageddon governments freaked out didn't know what was going on it was it was a rough time um and we'll get into small pieces of that lore no one knows why it happened but everything what we do know is it only lasted 24 hours and then on march 7th at 602 eastern standard time Boom, the sky came back. Everything was back to normal again. Now, during that 24 hour period of darkness, there's a lot of conflicting reports that came out and around. People were reporting mythical creatures or horrific creatures, creatures out of horror movies or mythical creatures or vampires or werewolves or just go down the entire line of anything your imagination can come up with there are probably stories out there the thing is when it was all said and done there were no bodies if somebody you know you think if those creatures actually existed and maybe possibly killed them they'd have the body to show for it there were no bodies. There were definitely lots of dead humans, dead people around because of whatever freaking out, you know, mistaken identities, people walking through the woods, getting shot by other people being scared, the whole slew of what could have happened. But there were no creature bodies ever found. Now, that's general knowledge. What, uh, the players know is during that time they changed they changed from being human into I will just for right now call them creatures each one is unique on their own and we'll have them go through and explain to them what they became they have no idea as to why these creatures are called nightbane some of the things that um the nightbane or some of the knowledge that came with becoming nightbane just so that everyone knows and for our players to make sure they remember when they became nightbane and we'll go through the actual process here when we do some time recaps but the feeling was you woke from the dream the dream was being human and living in the human world. And Nightbane, just when you're in your Nightbane form, it was like you were finally awake. You don't know why or how this came to be, but it felt more natural to Nightbane. 
to be Nightbane. This this felt like, hey, yeah, this is the way I'm supposed to be. And I have this other form, human form, that I have to be in order to get a get along in the human world because one cannot just walk down the street as a werewolf let's say and expect nothing to happen in the world they would be shot depending on the city either by other people or by government but it feels yeah in going forward uh, when they change the nightbane form that is referred to as being in the morphous form and when they're in the human form, that is called the facade form, or the fake form. When you're in morphous form, it feels better, and they are considered supernatural creatures. And we will slowly discover as we go through what that means for each one of them. And in the human form, they're in humans, as you would expect. Uh, to start off with, let's just go around and let's get the characters figured out. So let's start with JP. Uh, go ahead and introduce your character, what he does, and then go into what your Morphus looks like. Okay, hi. Hello, um, I'm Lawrence. That's my full name. We came up with one. There it is. Uh, I'm Lawrence William Mothman, and I'm, I'm just a... I do programming stuff, you know, I, I work with IT and, and other systems, and truthful, I'm, I'm a hacker. I, I get into the computers and, and I have fun, I play with stuff, you know, that's what I do. Um, I, I look, I have really bad hair, it's always miscapped, um, all over the place, cowlicks everywhere, I haven't found a barber who likes actually cutting my hair yet. It's a little difficult, hard. I end up getting kicked out, so I have to do it myself most of the time. I, I, I wear fake glasses because it makes me look smarter. Uh, for some reason, working in my field, people just trust me better with white fake glasses on. I don't know why. Uh, sweater vests, all the way. Collared shirts. Uh, usually no tie. If I'm feeling a tie, it's loosely tied and very poorly done. Khaki pants and normal shoes. Uh, I guess I've got probably green eyes and brownish hair. We'll go with that. I'm usually slunched over something, and I either have my phone out and I'm doing stuff on it, or I have my computer and I'm doing stuff on it. Never without the tech. Gotta have it. That's Lawrence. And, uh, this morphous side is very different. When he's in his morphous side, he's, uh, I would probably presume, not his five foot six side, but maybe closer to six foot six. And a bit bulkier, beefier. His clothes definitely have to get, get stretched out a little bit. And his two arms turn into just two rifles. Two barrels that he can point in directions. And he grows two more arms out of his clothes. He's, the, his clothes are actually still rather torn from the effect of it because he hasn't bothered to sew corrections into it yet. And uh, his skin looks metallic, almost uh, red in hue, and has these grooves and divots in it in places. No, like, um, bolts or anything, just small little indent indented lines, and the uh, sun catches on him just a little bit. His hair, and actually he has no hair when he's in his morphous form, just chrome-domed all the way. And I think that's, yeah, I think that's him. Yeah, his eyes, actually, there we go. <laughs> I should probably mention his eyes. They look a little like goggles constantly, like he's wearing goggles, but he's not actually because there's no strap. But there are two lines and divots that kind of make it look like a strap on first glance. But they are genuinely just his eyes. They kind of look like giant camera lenses almost. Uh, I guess we'll go to Millicent next. Okie doke. So, I am playing Millicent Mothman, attorney at law. Um, 
uh, Lawrence's elder sister. Uh, as a human, as a facade, she is just kind of not particularly striking, right? Uh, she's pale brown hair, long straight brown hair. Um, nothing that impressive, nothing worth describing in detail. She's about five 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 six. Uh, she's in her late twenties. Um, and then when she transforms on the dark day, uh, she gets significantly taller to the top of her head, but then even more intimidating in her form because she sprouts these giant moth wings out of her back. Um, she is based around... yes? I'm just pointing at the arm. Oh, oh, I thought you had a question. <laughs> no. Um, no. So, uh, yeah, so she's a mothman. She has... she sprouts like a big, fluffy white almost looking like a shawl, except it's part of her body. Um, and her wings are white with brown speckles. She's based around the ermine moth, if that helps. Um, she's got she's got antenna, but the kind of feathery kind of antenna, rather than just the stick straight kind of antenna. They're a nice dark black. She has big buggy eyes uh, that um, can see in the ultraviolet, can see in the dark, a whole bunch of cool stuff like that. She, let me see, does she have any extra limbs to go with it? No, she does not have any extra limbs. She has the same amount of limbs, unless we count wings as limbs, in which case she has two more limbs. Um, yeah, her, she doesn't turn, she's like a, a good combination of bug and person, um, so her legs and her arms get a bit like longer, a bit scrawnier, but they don't get like the weird jagged spikes on them or anything like that. She's she's just a bug lady. And that's Millie. Cool. And then last but not least, Ox. Yeah, I'll be playing Ox Baloak. Um who is an uninteresting looking individual, brown hair and eyes, uh, a medium uh, length beard, um, average height, uh, he is bulky, uh, but um, a soft spoken individual who works for uh, the forestry uh, department. Uh, and uh, yeah. And uh, when he is in his amorphous form, I guess his, his true form, um, he turns into a 10 foot tree. Um, he doesn't have a face. He has roots instead of legs and uh, branches and leaves, what have you. Um, yeah, he's a 10 foot tree. That's Ox. Yay! Except he's a 10 foot tree that can move. <laughs> True. Maybe not the fastest, but can move, so, you know. That may look a little strange walking down the street, but hey. <laughs> we'll just call him Kurt from now on. No. <laughs> Kurti. Turg. <laughs> I am Turg. Cool. Okay. Well then. That's our characters. So again, our characters are on vacation what we've pre-established and they happen to be visiting Ox at his cabin that he also works out of in upper Michigan Michigan Minnesota. yeah Michigan, Michigan. yes uh, his current location is there uh, JP already has those coordinates 
Uh, it's just in the middle of the forest. Uh, the dark there day are, happened on their third day. Is there an easy way day. for me to grab those numbers from your screen? Not from my screen, but I, they should be in the Nightbane notes. Ah. Yeah. Monday, which, we can grab it from there real easily. Which you can, you can just copy and paste as well and put it into the search engine or in the search bar in Google Earth and it'll take you right there. It's great. All right. We're on some kind of bridge. Ditch. Could you move the numbers mm. actually down to the bottom? They're being hidden by your name in the overlay. Or is it easier for me to move the name? Uh, let me... I can probably... Is that better? That is... You know what? Actually, I've changed my mind. I like them a little better at the top. Hi, everyone. This is called Tech Moment. As we decide things About there. Are. But then it's covering your glorious face. Well, it's not gonna be on all the time, see? But... Oh, I know. <laughs> Boom, there. Boom, there we come. go. Thank there. you. Boom, come. Anyway, okay. So they were on vacation trying to get their... Uh, unwind their, from their the Their annual muscle. vacation with Uncle Their Ar. annual vacation. Who is it? Their uncle. Visiting their uncle. And uh, on the third day is when the dark day happened. We've gone over this before, but just because the audience has not heard about this. Um, the dark day itself, the 24 hour period of the dark day itself, actually, you could easily break it into three segments. Um, the first eight hours of dark day, pure chaos. Um, being in the middle of the forest, not so much chaotic for you, but you are still monitoring. I mean, you're, you're in the middle of the forest, but you have a satellite uplink, you have internet, you have phones, TV, whatever you need. It's not like you're roughing it out there. You're a forester. You got to be able to keep in communication with everything. So very chaotic, lots of news channels, just freaking out, no one having a real explanation government's being there saying you know we're we're on it and we're you know trying to appease the masses but no real answer is being given you know we're trying to figure this out please you know shelter in place let's 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 not go crazy here we'll figure this out nothing nothing is saying that well government's being the government they're going to say everything that they can say to try and calm people down and then you know during that eight hour period the story started appearing you know on the internet on youtube there are, are creatures mythical creatures monsters the whole realm vampires werewolves unicorns <laughs> who knows creatures from the movies Blobs, Pinhead, who knows? Everybody out there was seeing stuff and even some very, very good YouTube videos too, you know? Looked, looked pretty real. <laughs> looked pretty real. But still mainly chaos. The second eight hour period, we'll call it the quiet time. <laughs> The government went quiet. All governments, not just the United States government, but if you're in different parts of the world, those governments as well. All governments went quiet. They stopped broadcasting updates. They stopped deployment. I mean, the police were out there and were still doing their job. Uh, military was out there and still doing their jobs but it was just quiet it was just like no direction no reassurance to the public certain things failed YouTube failed don't know why YouTube went down 
eh, you can draw your own conclusions from what happened there. It was just the quiet time. Um, you also saw this, Peter, um, being a government employee. The first eight hours, they were just like, since you're way out in the middle of nowhere, they're just like, you know, hey, shelter in place. Don't worry about it. We'll figure this out. We'll figure out what's going on. We'll send you updates. During that quiet period, no updates, no contact. If you tried calling your district ranger, no one answered. In fact, it didn't even go through. You got the phone number is no longer in service problem. Hmm. It was really weird. The last eight hour block, the government came back on but it was a very different feel to it. It was the martial law feel. Okay, this seems to be going on. We're declaring martial law. Everyone needs, is being enforced to shelter in place now. We are deploying troops to the major cities. We are saying, stay in your home. We will investigate everything. See anything suspicious, see a creature, see a monster, report it, report it, report it. You know, uh, Peter, from your government contact perspective, uh, updates came back on and they're saying, Hey, you know, your, your district ranger was like, this is really weird, but you know, they sheltered in place, being out in the middle of the forest, not really much you can do. Don't leave stay where you are stay in contact if you do see anything stranger than what you might normally see please report it if you see hunting parties out there people hunting tell them they need to go home they need to go shelter at the nearest city they need to get out of the forest no one should be out there no one should be allowed to be out there the national forests are closed Then, night, day, night. Well, that's the way it is from the government perspective during that eight hour period. During the quiet time, during that eight hour period of the quiet time is when the party transformed for the first time. Just to be simple and not cause a lot of freak out problems, you all did it at the exact same time. Because <laughs> if one of you would have done it, then the other two would have been a problem. You all did it at the same time. The first time that you guys changed into Morphous, let's just say it was not a good experience. Um, it took a long time yeah, from your perspective let's just say minutes think of it like in those bad horror movies where you hear every bone crack you hear everything creak your body's changing for the first time into this new form it wasn't very nice skin ripping bones cracking and taking their sweet time and doing it. Painful, not very nice. But once it stopped, that's when this euphoria feeling came over and like, wow, I'm awake. This feels right. This feels the way it's supposed to be. And from then, it's just like, consider it like a switch in your head that you could easily see. You could change back and forth between your facade form and your morphous form. Now, for the individual person, I leave the actual transformation visually, however you wish to do it, up to you, because it is something that you can control. But for the practical game term term terminology, it is as instantaneous as you want, and it is not painful. 
it just can happen but you can make it as spectacular looking as you want or as horrifying looking as you wish it to be does that make sense for everybody mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sure it does. does for this first one I'm going to say that Millicent started spinning around a little slowly at first because she didn't know what was going on then she started spinning and spinning and spinning and then she made a chrysalis and turned into goop and it was very unpleasant because she felt herself being dissolved <laughs> and then she reformed as a big bud lady just for the first one though just for flavor okay no bones breaking just mush mush the dissolve <laughs> anybody else wish to say anything at this point Curious to how Ox's first transformation felt. Well, I'm just going to say, for the good of my cabin, I was outside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come it's on. A giant hole in the and, uh. Well, Ox has always felt at home in the woods, and I so I think becoming a tree basically. Would be a very easy process for him. Um, he got taller, uh, but I think he he feels pretty much the same throughout the process. Besides getting just bigger. Okay. Yeah, you know those old werewolf movies where they're mm. literally grabbing at their skin and peeling it off. That's entirely what happened to Lawrence. Grabbed his skin, peeled it off. Hands probably had a barrel burst out in between and two of the fingers before the fingers fell off. It was grotesque. And painful. I mean painful for the first time. For the first time. For the first time. If you do it again, you don't know why, but it's not painful. It can still look the same if you wish it, but it's not painful the second time or thereafter. Nice. Pain was only the first time because you were more at home in your human form. So you were still experiencing things from the human perspective, from a facade perspective. Mm-hmm. Now that you know that you are Nightbane and you feel in your gut that that is your form, it's always a relief. Like you've been holding your breath. Oh, God, finally. (laughs) Back to normal. Yeah. Okay, let's go. No pain. Okay. Or I'm going to speed through the next 24 hours as well after the dark day Uh, things are getting back to normal Uh, the government is getting back to normal really you know martial law was not kept in place so we're not talking about the government used this to seize control and everything or any scenario like that they just did what was preventative and expected to try and get control of an unknown situation Uh, so they went okay great we're getting back to normal. Martial law is over. Please try and get back to normal. Please keep an eye out. There's still Randy. If you see something, report it. But you can tell they are trying to get things back to normal. Uh, for you guys, I'm just going to say you took that 24 hour period. And you can role play any of it that you wish to role play, but we're just going to take this 24 hour period just for self reflection, a reset. We're actually, I don't want you actually to try and come up with any plans or anything and go do something. I just want you to use this as your, that really happened. Yeah, that really happened. Uh, try and understand, because, you know, beforehand, just this isn't something that's normal. This is brand new. 
Nightbane. You don't know if you are the only three, but considering that, of course, all these reports are out there, it kind of does make sense that maybe there are more, but you can't, you don't know if those reports are real or faked or whatever. You might have questions about the fact that there were never any body sound. Um, I don't think any one of you want to experiment with dying to see what happens, but <laughs> feel free to if you wish to. <laughs> um, as far as your government context, Peter, I mean, technically you still are on vacation. So no one gets a hold of you. It's up to you if you wish to reach out or do anything like that. So for that next 24 hour period, do you guys have any general questions that you want answered right now about the world or about anything? Or should we just go to yeah, what would gosh. be March 8th? Go ahead. Uh, so in the dark day, when we transform for the first time, are we then stuck in our Morphous? Or, well, are we remaining in our Morphous until the sun comes back? Or are we able to turn it off and then on again during the dark period? You're able to turn it off, on and off during the dark period. Once you've become Morphous, it is under your control. Interesting. So it's not like there would have been a struggle of, oh, I want to go back. No struggle. And not being able to. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, well, yeah, uh, Millie probably would have remained in bug form for the rest of the dark time. Um, and then when the sun comes back... Hmm, she'd give it a few hours and then she'd turn into human shape again um and then there would be the expected discussion of huh um and coming to grips with the fact that we are now all creatures creature of the night creature of the night creature of the night i think lawrence probably did a bunch of research on cryptids hmm. immediately after thought about Bigfoot, maybe went out and asked Millie hey do you think Bigfoot's one of us? like has this happened in the past? I mean there are no records of it happening in the past but then again I don't know if they would keep records of this so I, I mean know. Area 51 who knows <laughs> I mean uh. That's a good question. There are no, there are no references to, and I, another, I'm just going to throw it out there. You three know the terminology nightbane. Mm. You don't know why. You know, this is what we are, nightbane. You search for it on the internet or whatever. There are no references oh. ever historical. Um. Or anything. For, for flavor suggestion, mm -hmm. I don't know if I can, but as we're doing our research um, and we're thinking about it, Millicent is going to strongly encourage that everyone use a VPN of some nature so the IP address can't <laughs> be traced back to the cabin. Actually, this is what Lawrence would be focusing on because uh, the word nightbane, I mean, uh, old enough in age works in night, he hacks things regularly. Uh, he would not use that word in any searching. Uh, he doesn't understand why he has it, so he, he would just avoid using it. All the research he's been doing has been to other eyewitness events of what these monsters are, where they're coming from, and then looking into cryptids, because that, that feels like what some other people would probably be doing as well, but using the word Nightbane yeah, gives him the heebies. It's too it easy does to call in the people. question, though, anything you've ever heard about mythos, like Bigfoot? Yeah. Sasquatch, Yetis, Loch Ness, vampires, werewolves, ghosts. I mean, what what is real? What is maybe a possible nightbane of the past? Who knows? Or did this just happen? Because, 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 Millie, you, you, you look like the Mothman. You realize that, right? You, you look like the Mothman. I'm pointing at you with one of my rifle arms. 
uh, Millie's unloaded. person shaped by it's now. Like they're all unloaded. Uh, because as a moth, she has like a moth head, so she can't like speak. She would just make funny little clicky, chirpy noises. So she's person shaped. Uh, she is, sh sorry, regular words. She is in her facade. There we go. Um, <laughs> and she'll just kind of look at herself and kind of nod a bit and say, hmm. I mean, I always have liked a good pun, but that. Oh, Interesting. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, our last name's Mothman. Yeah. I wonder so... if there's any credence to that, or if it's just because. I don't know. Like, why Why do you think you guys are shaped like this? Like, in your shapes? Because, Lawrence, you're not a moth. No, I'm. You're a gun arm man. Thing. Oh yeah. my god, Lawrence, you have firearms! You, quite literally, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I guess I do. Wow. I didn't think of that. I've also got arms. It's weird yeah. having four arms. Well, two, it's I guess. We're having wings. Can you fly? How do lights uh, behave with you? Like, do they attract you or something? I mean... I haven't seen, like, a disco ball in the past 12 hours. We should get so a disco ball. We should. Like something, or, or, or just like a candle, moth to a flame. We should test that out. Um, hey, Funkle Ox. Ox. Yes. Lawrence. Lawrence. Do you, um, Funkle abbreviated for fake uncle. <laughs> do you have, uh, do you have a, like, candle or something? I want to see if my sister will fly into it and set herself on fire. Hey! <laughs> I have a bunch of lamps, as always. Are they electric? No. Oh, you've got the bug-killing lamps. Yeah, I totally need one no. of those. Well, you... It's an oil lamp. You just light it. Yeah, All right. We could, we could test it. I haven't tried flying, but... um. That being said... She is your sister, so you may not want to test her death. Oh, well, she, she could drop, stop, drop, and roll. I mean, I'm sure she'll survive being on fire for like six seconds or something. I don't know. So, I have a question for the GM. Mm -hmm. You said there are no bodies. Is there... Okay, so Lawrence, his fingers fell off. Are there fingers on the ground? Like, is there schmutz? Is there muck that we need to nope. clean up? No. It just... Psh, sizzles away. Bizarre. Okay. I mean, I don't see any moth dust, but I mean, they certainly look as if they could work. Um, and with that, she will consider being in her morphous true shape once more. And then this time, instead of going full chrysalis, she'll go moth who just emerged from a chrysalis how their wings are kind of shriveled up at first and then they have to like dry out and spread but that process takes just like a very short amount of time just a little bloop and then she's taller she's fuzzy she's a moth bloop. um and then she'll give it a couple of flippy flaps she'll she'll start off actually rather than trying to rise from the ground directly she'll go outside she'll like climb up a ladder or onto the roof or something and then she'll just kind of look down and just kind of step off while trying to she'll be making little like chicken arm movements with her arms as well to like try and get into the <laughs> grip of things um and then she'll just kind of step off the roof and she kind of stays there it's not a very solid movement it's not very graceful it's not like mothra that we've seen in sorry how do we uncopyright these words? She's not like the giant moth from the movie about the lizard guy. You can um, mention she, stuff. She's not graceful degree. with it. She's like a regular little moth that you would see in the world, like kind of frantic flapping and not staying perfectly in place, but kind of more or less seeing around the same area. And she'll make some funny clicks and then she'll flap slower and slower and land and go back to being a person and say, well, I guess I can fly. I was kind of hoping you would just fall on your face. Of course you were. 
That would have been funny. Mm. It would have. <laughs> Good to know what you're capable of. Um, yeah, so, well, Uncle Ox, can you can you move when you're a tree? What, and what kind of tree? I didn't get a good look at those leaves. Um, you will see Ox grow to ten feet tall into a tree. Um, well, we'll say it's an oak tree. Well, uh, at least uh, it's not cedar, but... And, uh... <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't have a face or a mouth, but from somewhere, uh, you'll hear... Mm, you and your parents are pretty much the only people I care about. Uh, have you heard from them? Oh, crap. We should probably call Mom. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we probably should. I think I might have to draw this vacation out a little bit. I don't know if I can go back. But we well, depending on how they answer, the going back might be different as well. Yeah, I don't... I don't really like being human anymore yeah it feels wrong stunted it feels like Worse. when you're not it feels like when you're a kid and you walk around without bending your joints like just stiff and weird and constrained it's the oh, same like kind of had, feeling like but like a... with your skin itchy as well because you know it's not right oh like a real bad case of chicken pox I think the point is that it's worse. Um, yeah. And uh, you should probably contact your parents, see how they are. I'll go make something up for us to eat. Might help our thinking. Mm. Nice. Ox is gonna turn back not into a tree and go into the cabin. Uh, he's gonna make some uh, some BLTs sandwiches. Ooh. And Millie's going to check her smartwatch to see if she can figure out what calories just got burnt off by changing into a different thing and then back again. And Lawrence is, is going to call mom. <laughs> hmm. Okay. A uh, little bit of housekeeping real fast. Millicent, on your character sheet, your speed in Morphus is that your land speed and where is your flight speed that is a wonderful question um so that number doesn't make sense as far as a fly speed goes but so my fly speed is uh well i don't even i'm just gonna copy and paste it um where would it go notes in case for whatever reason you need to read my notes you are the kids <laughs> okay so my fly speed is uh 1dx uh, sorry 1d4 times 10 and then plus 20 so you need to roll that out and establish ah. fly speed. oh oh i thought that was something that we would roll every time okay yeah. Like, I just thought some days I was sleepy. I don't know. Okay, a D10. No, D4. The triangle board is. Cow drop. Oh, very nice. Okay. So that is 60. My fly speed is 60. Ooh. 60 what? Who knows? 60. Dang, I am over two. I am, yeah, I'm over twice as fast flying than I am walking as a moth. And even still, I'm just way faster flying as a moth than walking as a person. Who'd have thunk it? Being a different creature has enhanced abilities. Oh, man. 
I need to move a chart. Ooh. Make a copy. Where's the copy? Copy. Move. Share. Copy. No. And organize. Paste. Move. Move to there, please. Hold it. Hold up. Should be... Quick refresh. Okay. Um, there is a new chart there called Copy a Speed Chart. It will give you a reference to what that speed factor number actually means. Unfortunately, in American standards. Sorry. Nah. Oh, eight. so my walking speed as a person is 16. And so that means that the speed of it is 960 feet per minute? Yep. Well, damn. That's fast really fast. That's yeah. fast as heck. I can go 10 miles an hour walking as a human person. Well, no, that's your max speed. I wouldn't call it technically your walking speed. That's oh, just the maximum oh, okay. speed you can go. Okay, so that's like a 10 minute mile kind of vibe. Like as fast as yeah. you can go. Okay. Yeah. In case you're wondering, a bulky dude with it's roots um, is not fast. <laughs> yeah. What's that, your that speed <laughs> like? In Morphous form, which is my fastest form, uh, top speed, 11 and a half miles an hour. Ooh, okay, okay. So. That's not very fast, yeah. Although for a yeah. tree, that's stinking a tree, fast. That's that's a tree in the west. That's not rolling downhill, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great point, great point. I'm about 15 miles an hour in my morphous form. Oh, so I know, Ox, what your battle cry needs to be. When you're running into battle, cry, Timber! <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, leave it... Uh, Start charging in right after Lauren starts off with, All right, it's going down. <laughs> then yell Timber. Okay, well, we got a phone call. Giggles and 